point is this. After I did all of that, in the middle of the tussle and whatever, God didn't speak. I thought, the mo- when I left, and then, do you know when he now spoke next? When we started the church, the first service, which I used funds from my business to start. I said, Lord, you want to make us a mighty nation? I'm loaning money to start this church. <laughs> what kind of mighty nation is that? And then the first day I held the mic, and as I stood, you know, at the, at the altar, I just heard in my right ear, what you did not do in 20 years of pastoring your last church, you will do in two or less. The God we serve is a speaking spirit. <laughs> and listen to this, the altar doesn't speak unless there's sacrifice. The time God chose to speak is after I'd given my life again. But you are waiting till everything is comfortable. You say, the Lord told me that he hasn't said anything yet, so I'm waiting. No. Until you commit yourself, God will not commit himself. Tell somebody next to you, say, you can't be sleeping in this kind of service. If, <laughs> you can't. God is always up to something, and he's always looking for someone to partner with. And the, the, the things he's up to are great things. Listen to this, because he's a great God. And unless this is the way to have God do great things in your life. Is this making sense? This is what Miles said. <laughs> what vision is essentially is, if you hold a seed in your hand, yeah, uh, an apple seed, and I say, what do you see? What will you tell me? You have a seed in my hand. So, you are not seen with the eyes of faith. If I hold an apple seed in my hand, I say, what do you see? A visionary person or a prophetic person will say, I see an apple tree. Or in fact, they will say, I see an orchard. Does that make sense? So, the, the, it's a passing of faith, when God gives you a word, you need to begin to see not things as they are, or not rather, as they can be. Whatever your industry, and you need to begin to live in that reality. And this is what the Lord said. He says, and the Lord said to Abraham, <clears throat> after Lot had separated from him, lift your eyes now. Listen to this. Some of you will not see until you separate from Lot. Some of you, the, the, the reason why you are not seeing the God-given vision is Lot is choking you. And you will not get a Lot until you leave Lot alone. Good morning, good morning, good morning, church. Can we please rise up as we are key into the opening prayer? Um, can we please rise up, please, if you can? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Let's just start to thank God this morning. Let's thank God for the grace to be alive. Let's thank God for his mercy and his grace upon our lives. Let's just thank God for he has made today a day, and we should be glad and rejoice in it. Let's just thank God for his grace, his mercy upon our lives. Let's just thank God that for the opportunity to be alive, to be well this morning. Waking up is a privilege, it's not a right. Let's just open our voice this morning, and let's just thank God this morning for his faithfulness, for his grace, for his mercy that endureth forever, for his love upon us, the children of man, for his grace, for, for his provision, for his protection. Let us give God the glory, uh, the glory this morning. Let us just praise his name this morning. Karabar, if you could speak in tongues, start opening your voice, and let us start praying in our most holy faith by speaking in tongues this morning. Karabu, shede, kede, barabus. Kakakakakakakakarabus. Kede, 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 barabarabus. Sede, de, 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 de. Karabarabarabus, shede, ke, 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 ke. Barabarabus, sorubu, sede, de, 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 de. Karabarabus, sede, de, 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 de. Kere, barabarabus, let us charge up the atmosphere this morning. Let us start to spray in tongues. Karabo sorobo shara kerebo sara ke ke ke. Karabarabo se de ke 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 ke. Barabarabo she de kere barabo se de 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 de. Ke 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 kere barabarabo so. Let us charge the atmosphere this morning. Let us invite the Holy Spirit to come in our midst this morning. We have not come here to see a man or a woman. We have come here to meet with our Father, our Heavenly. 
Holy Father, let us just raise our voice this morning. Kere barabo shede, kere barabo se, ke 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 ke, bara barabo se de, ke 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 ke, barabo shede kere bo. Let us commit the service to God's hand. Let us pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that we would meet our Maker. We would have an encounter. We will not be here for for another Sunday. We will not be here for a show. We will not be here for an entertainment. We will be here to meet with God. Dara barabo shede ke 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 ke. That we have an encounter, we will not live here the way we came. That there will be a shake, there will be there will, there will be an anointing upon our lives that will show forth in Jesus' name. Kere bara bara bo shere ke 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 ke. Kara bara bara bo soro bo shere ke 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 ke. Kara bara bo shere ke 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 ke. Let us start to commit, Pastor Pins, and everyone that's ministering unto God's son. Let us pray that there will be utterance, Lord, from the Holy Spirit upon the vessel that God is using today for for sound of liberty for the fourteen the 13 facilities everyone that is serving today father lord that we will have all our just will be used by god in jesus name karabo shere ke 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 karabara bara bo sere ke re bo soro bo 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 karabara ke 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 let us start to pray that the bible says that if you have a faith as small as a mustard seed you tell this mountain to move and it will move let us pray that at the end of this season of faith our faith will be bigger than a mustard seed that whatever issues, whatever problems that we have, we have a faith enough to move it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Whatever you're going through, let us pray that the end of this season of faith will be like giants you know, in the front of our problems in Jesus' name. Garabo sede ke 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 ke. Garabara barabo shede ke 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 ke. Barabara bo sede ke 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 ke. Barabara bo soro bo 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 bo. Ke ke re barabara bo soro ko 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 ko. Ke ke re barabara barabo sede ke 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 ke. Garabara barabara bo shede de 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 de. That whatever issues, Lord, that we will have a solution to it. Lord, that our faith will be strong, our faith, oh Lord Jesus, will move, oh Lord Jesus, mountains, whatever become, whatever is a mountain, whatever is a mountain to you, that at the end of the service, Lord, you will have, Father, Lord, a faith that will move it, Lord, in Jesus' name, that will be strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit. As we start to end this time, let us to pray that God will speak to you personally, that you will have a word, that you will live here with something, you will live here with something. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. It's my pleasure to hand over to the Sound of Liberty.
give you this time to just lift up your hands. If you're honoring your love, Lord. and worship the King of Kings and the Lord God of hosts did we come to praise Him anybody ready to dance right now open the eyes of my heart oh God everybody your hands together let's get into the groove of it thank you Jesus
your father's house round of applause for the phenomenal voices and minstrels guys come on give it up for Jesus who gives gifts to man amen praise God I want you to look to your neighbor and say you are incredibly special you're sitting next to me so you're special amen God bless you so my name is Ruth and I'm just here to introduce the testimony but before that I have a couple of reminders how many of you know we're a global church amen <laughs> we're streaming to the ends of the earth praise God for that so if you're watching us on YouTube hi YouTube fam <laughs> this is the Liberty Church Global you've clicked to the right page today want to encourage you to like the stream the algorithm on YouTube allows us to reach more people where we have have more likes so please do so so the gospel can reach even those that are lost right and we want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel there's so much coming from this house in the next couple of months I want you to be a partaker if you're in the auditorium you can also kind of click on the YouTube app and like the stream that also helps us right Liberty Tribe hey <laughs> Liberty Tribe is the teenage expression hey my people <laughs> Teenage expression of the Liberty Church London, and they have their own hybrid service happening at the same time. So if you're a teenager in the auditorium or you're a teenager watching online, there is a space for you in God's house, right? So I want to encourage you to go to that side of the hall. Shane, would you want to wave? Hey, that's team. He's going to take you to your service. And if you are watching online, please click the link in the bio so you can join, right? We also have sermon notes, right, as we kind of partake of the word. We want to encourage you to take notes, um, to take a deposit of what God is saying to you so you can mule and meditate on it in the week. So scan the QR code, click the link in our bio so you can follow the sermon as we go, right? Testimonies are the DNA um, at the Liberty Church. We understand that God has given us a liberation mandate in this generation, and this this testimony specifically speaks of how God can turn around a situation even in accelerated speed. That's not correct English, but you'll get it when you watch it. <laughs> right? And straight after the testimony, our resident pastor, our beloved PB, will be here to give God's word in Jesus' name. God bless you. Hello, church. Here's my amazing experience with God. I inadvertently locked myself out whilst on my balcony and required the assistance of a neighbor to let me in. Though it seemed an innocuous incident, I was prompted to pray as I did not feel right in my spirit. 
I prayed that nothing would lock me out anywhere I belong. I went out that evening and bumped into an ex-colleague who had been made redundant and prayed more fervently as I thought both incidents were a sign. The day after was the last ridiculous praise Sunday and I danced like my life depended on it. The first email I opened at work on Monday confirmed my worst fears. Despite being lauded as a top performer in my company, I was being made redundant as the company had fallen on hard times. I thought it had been an error, <laughs> but it was confirmed in a meeting with the international MD. To make things worse, my UK visa was attached to my employer and I had a year to go to apply for my indefinite leave to remain. I called one of our pastors in tears and he advised that this is not the time for tears, but that I should cast my net out to contacts within the industry. He also suggested reaching out to my lawyer to confirm my immigration status post the job loss. I took his advice on both counts and the lawyer confirmed I had 60 days to get a new job. I tried to buy time by negotiating with my employer, offering to work for half pay to assist the company. My offer was dismissed after a week of deliberation. I accepted and left everything to God. Whilst this was going on, I'd started to spread my tentacles by speaking to strategic players in the industry. The following Sunday was our pre-Christmas service at the Canary Wharf location. And we were asked to write a gift request to God and put it on the Christmas tree. No prizes for guessing what my request was. I asked God for a job before Christmas. I met with PB after service and informed her about the issue. She asked me not to worry and said a one-line prayer that it is well. I was like, really? I kept smiling because in my head I was thinking, if only she knew I was expecting super packed prayers with some karate involvement, but then again, you know, I remember the grace upon PB every day. I will pray and praise God with Jesus I by Pastor Nathaniel. I woke up for my 5.30 a.m. devotion, but decided to look through my email first. I saw an email from a company I'd not applied to, but it was from the regional VP sales of the company. And he mentioned I had been recommended by one of the founders of the company that had made me redundant and wanted to speak to me that day as they were looking to shut down for the year. I responded that I was available to meet on the day, but felt led to call immediately as the chap must have been awake to send the email. I had my first interview at 5.30 a.m finished by 6 30 a.m i was at the gym after my devotional when i was called to confirm a second interview at 9 a.m by midday i had my third interview negotiations of commercials and contracts by 3 p.m i got a formal offer on the same day the feedback i got was that aside from the fact that I nailed my interview on the first call. They said it had never happened before where someone proactively called that early. Mm, I, I don't think it's ever happened. The icing on the cake is that this company had no license to sponsor a tier two skilled worker visa. But they said they started the fast track application process to get their sponsorship because of me as they had received outstanding references from my previous employer. God really has children. Suffice to say, they got the license, issued my COS, Certificate of Sponsorship, 
pay for my visa and all other fees in respect of it, I did not have to leave home once or spend a penny. I started the job in March and whilst on a call, my manager, who is a chief revenue officer, sent me a message saying they needed to raise my profile by enhancing my role and giving me a new job title of my choice. At this point, I'm as confused as you are listening to this testimony. A few things I did in my time. I listened to the Holy Spirit kept paying my tithes, praised ridiculously, even in the face of incessant rejections, called everyone in the industry, kept mentors and friends updated. Family prayers were an anchor, and I cried for help when required, as God will always use people. I am that lady that is helped by God. I thank God for coming through for me for not putting me to shame, for showing me signs early and what to pray about and for directing my path. I want to thank PSFA and PB for their teachings and prophetic dimensions. When next I hear PB say it is well, the way I will shout amen, nobody will believe it. I also want to thank my family, my TLC pastors, and my special person who stood with me all through the tough moment. God bless my TLC church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are the next in line for a ridiculous testimony, come on, show! Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you came to sit down, and you are in the wrong service. Come and tell your other neighbor, say, the scriptures say, they went up with a shout. So if you are ready to go up, that means you are ready to shout. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You're welcome. You may be seated in God's awesome presence. You know, I'm really excited to be sharing this message with you. And I'm especially excited about the theme of the month. We're in the month of faith. It's very, very important whenever you belong to a spiritual house, whenever you belong to a spiritual community, that you key into the theme of that month. If the set man, if the visionary pastor of the church has received a direction for the month, that means that that is something that God wants to unfold and perform in your life. So it's very, very important that you grab that word, grab that theme, and begin to incubate it in your life. So last week, Pastor Shola shared with us nine keys to walking in faith. And you know, from every sermon, there are a few highlights, a few things for us to take away. And some of the things that, that uh, ministered to me as he spoke, um, he said that faith is a currency in the spirit realm. Just like we go into a store and we don't speak in tongues to get the coat or the jacket or the bag that we went into, we give them money. Likewise, in the spirit realm, Faith is the currency we use to transact in the heavenly realm and to get the things that God has for us into the natural and the material realm. So faith is like a check that we can use to access the blessings of God. The second thing that Pastor Shala said that was really, really profound for me is he talked about the need for stretch. If you're going to obtain anything from God, you need to stretch your faith, extend your faith. And this has been my own personal experience in that whenever I needed God to do something new in my life, I had to extend myself to reach for that new level, to reach for that 
thing that I was believing God for. And that's why I asked you to shout at the beginning. Because it's very, very important to be responsive spiritually. You cannot want something new from God and remain the same. You cannot want something new from God, but we want to remain in the same phase, in the same realm, in the same level of comfort that you've always had. So if you want to experience more, you have to provoke more by stretching. But today I've come to ask you a critical question. And the critical question I've come to ask you is, do you really have faith in God? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I know you come to church. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, sometimes I know you even go to prayer meetings. But do you really have faith in God? Uh, so that's going to be our question of deliberation today. And perchance, your faith is not at the level that it should be. We're also going to look to equip you to grow in your faith. So our key scripture is in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 5 to 6. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's not hard. It's not difficult. There is no chance of success if you do not have faith to please God. I know some of you are not used to a talking church, but faith is a speaking exercise. This scripture says impossible. I thought that was the word that stood out to me. Impossible. That's huge. So what this scripture is saying that if you don't have faith, you cannot please God. And there's another scripture that says if you cannot have faith, you cannot receive from God. So how many of you know that faith is a profound, critical, important thing that we have to attend to? If we are going to be in the position that we need to be, spiritually. Faith is critical. It's essential to our spiritual life. Faith is like what air is in the natural system. Faith should be part of your, you you should understand that faith is a key part of your spiritual ecosystem. Without faith, you cannot be sustained spiritually. Without faith, you cannot enjoy or receive the things that Christ died to purchase for you. But one of the things I was thinking on as I meditated on this scripture is is that the scripture said that our lack of faith is unpleasing to God. You know, and I began to think, what's God's own? Do you ever ask that question? (laughs) Like, Like, if we don't have faith, it's for us, right? We are the ones that don't get what God has for us if we don't have faith. So why is God unhappy when we don't? have faith. Let's look at the definition of faith because this will help us understand the answer to that question. The definition of faith in the Greek, you guys know that the Bible wasn't written in English, right? Most of the Old Testament was written in the Hebrew. Most of um, the New Testament was written in the Greek. And so, uh, uh, you know, just like uh, for some of you who maybe speak an African dialect or uh, another European dialect, you will know that sometimes English words don't carry the full meaning of the original word it was used in. So the Greek word, pistis, means strong confidence in and reliance upon someone or something strong confidence in and reliance upon someone or something. There's a big part of that definition, but we'll look at that later. So our lack of faith or lack of strong confidence displeases God because it can indicate we do not really believe in God. That scripture says, he who comes to God must believe that he is. But I believe another translation puts it better, the Berean Version It says, it behooves the one drawing near to God to believe that he exists. Don't you love that word, behooves? It means it's for your benefit, which means some people do not utilize the benefit. Another version, contemporary version, it says, we must believe that God is real. Why is the scripture saying that? It's saying that because it's possible to be around church, to be around God, but actually not believe. 
Jesus used to say, the kingdom of God is near to you, to people. Which means the kingdom of God can be near you, but that doesn't mean you are in it. If you don't believe me, there are many who walk closely with Jesus yet had no faith. Can you believe that? Jesus who healed people, raised the dead, you know, turned around situations, stopped the flow of blood, caused people to walk on water. Some people did not believe him. John 6 verse 63, it says, but there are some of you who do not believe. This is Jesus speaking. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who would betray him. In another scripture in John chapter 6 verse 68, He's talking to the disciples because some of the disciples have begun to leave him because his teaching became too hard for, him, for them. When he began to say, you must drink my blood and eat my flesh, some people thought, okay, this is where we check out. How many of you, if you came to a church and, they, and the pastor said, you must, you must eat my body and drink my blood, you would say, okay, time to change parish, Right? So, so when Jesus said this, because he was not a pastor, he was a Messiah, and there's a difference. Some people stopped following him. So Jesus turned to his closer apostles, some of the 12, and said, are you also not leaving? And this is what they said to him. They said, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. So that, what they were saying is that, we didn't always believe, but we have come to believe by experiential knowledge of you that you are God. So you can come to, 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 to church, but for some people, church and Christianity is really an insurance option. You are not entirely sure, but just in case, perchance. On that end day, it happens to be, you know, the God of the Bible that is the saving God, you want to have been able to tick that box. Perhaps that is what accounts for your lukewarmness and your lack of commitment. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm sure that wasn't about you. It's about the person sitting next to you. Profound. Jesus said some people do not believe even though they identify as part of the body. They identify as believers, but they do not believe. Galatians 2.19, it says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. You and I are called to live by faith. Faith is not negotiable. It's not optional in the choice of things, you know. Some people can say, do you know that if you don't speak to tongue, in tongues, you'll still go to heaven? You'll miss a lot of things, but you'll still end up there. You know, some people don't practice the Sabbath. You'll be knackered when you get to heaven, but you'll still get there. But faith is not optional. In fact, faith is the substance of your Christian life. It's the core of your definition in God. It's what defines who you are as a believer. So that's why the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. That means you are not connected to God if you don't have faith. The second reason why it's displeasing to God is also in that scripture. It says it's because lack of faith shows that we do not know who God is or his heart for us. Hebrews 11, it says, he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. God is a rewarder. If you believe that God is a rewarder, you will believe and trust him for a reward. True or false? I was sharing with the first service that, you know, you have some fake uncles in, you know, where I come from. Some fake uncles that look like big, big men. There's no money in their account. They just go around with, with, with there's something we call, uh, but I want these big flowing gowns. And they look like VIPs. But there's nothing, nothing. But you know, you have some aunties. Reboche. Those aunties, even in Africa, there's always foreign currency in their bag. Sterling, dollars. When you are going, they'll just say, here, $50 to do your nails. Reboche. 
hundred dollars to do your hair. How many of you like those kind of aunties? Uh -huh. Those aunties are rewarders. Experientially, when you spend time with them, you know that whenever you are around them, something must drop. True or false? That's how it is with God. God is a rewarder. That is the core of who God is. So perhaps the reason why your faith is not strong is because you don't know the nature of your God. You don't know who he is. You don't know what he has. You don't know what his capacity is. You don't know what his capability is. That's why in John 4, 21, Jesus said, you know, to the Samaritan woman, to, to, to the Samaritan woman, you worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. You worship what you do not know. You come to church to listen to lessons about a God you do not know. Because if you knew him, your faith in him would be strong. Not only is God a rewarder, remember that God is only also a father. God is also a father. There's no, there's no way that a father, a good father, which God is, will not want to bless the child. In fact, everything that the father has is laid up for the child. So, faith requires that we, we stand in position concerning who God is. In true acknowledgement of his identity so that we can stand in right positioning with him. So when we lack faith, oftentimes it's because we do not know who God is or his father heart for us. And so what I want to spend the rest of today looking at is if you've identified you know, as we've spoken a little bit today, that you might fall into one or two categories where you know that your faith needs to be activated, your faith needs to be strengthened, your faith needs to be built. The good thing about faith is that it can be built. And so today, our message is titled, How to 10x Your Faith. And it's absolutely important. The Bible says, in all you're getting, get wisdom. You should also say, in all you're getting, get faith. The wise thing is to get faith because your faith will determine how you live in and experience God. It will determine what you will taste, what you will see, what you will experience, what you will overcome, what you will enjoy. Habakkuk 2 4 it says, the, the just shall live by his faith, his own faith, not his pastor's faith, not his overseer's faith, by his own faith. By what you are able to apprehend in God. By what you are able to believe in God. One of my favorite scriptures in the book of Psalms, it says, those who go down to the sea, the depths of the sea, they see the wonders of the Lord in the deep. Isn't that profound? And it takes faith to step into the deep. But when you enter the deep, you will see wonders in the deep. Could it be that we don't see wonders because we have not stepped into the deep? We've been comfortable with familiar shores. Comfortable with comfortable shores. We want to see great moves of God without paying a great price to apprehend it. We want to receive great things from God without extending our faith greatly. For those things, I always say, what you see, once, once, I mean, I think probably in my life, I've probably heard the audible voice of God. I can count it on my hands. But several years ago, after a particular women's conference I attended, I woke up in the morning and I heard audibly, like somebody was whispering in my ear, little faith, little impact, great faith great impact. So God was saying to me, you can be in my kingdom, you can come to church. But what you see, what you have is entirely dependent on you. Entirely dependent on the level of faith 
that you are able to build. So let's look now. I'm going to share with you five strategies. By the grace of God, we'll be able to do what we weren't able to do in the first service, which was finish this message. Five keys to activate your faith. Although there are five keys in one point, so maybe it's ten keys. But we'll get there. So the first thing, if you're going to activate your faith, is you must discover the largesse of your father. You must enlarge your knowing, your understanding of the might and power of God. Many times we are not full of faith because we haven't feasted on the faithfulness of God. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. You see, our faith rests on the power and nature of who we believe in. So the first question you have to answer in building your faith is how powerful is your God? What can your God do? What does your God look like? Was it a Elijah who, who challenged the, you know, the, 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 uh, the followers of the, of the gods of Molech and stuff to, to show themselves to be God? And they were cutting themselves, crying out, doing all sorts. And he was even taunting them that, is your God asleep? Because you've been crying out to him since morning to night. You people have been cutting yourself. Your God has not moved. So what he then did was that he poured water. He, poured, he, he asked them to light a, a fire, he, uh, uh, to put together the implements of a fire. He poured water on it. And then he commanded fire on it. Just to show them that your God and my God are not in the same rank. They don't live in the same atmosphere or stratosphere. The God that you and I worship is the creator of heaven and earth. The Bible says he drew a circle on the deep. You and I live on a planet sustained in space. Are you aware of that? From time to time, you should just look up. I mean, recently there was a, a is it an eclipse? And you saw that there is another life. There's another sphere. There's another realm. Apart from the one we know here. There's another ball rotating around another ball. And you know, the, the, the planets have to be so aligned that the, the, the sun doesn't come too, 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 too close to burn us. Everything is personally, is, is, is finely tuned. And there is another realm where there's no gravity. Did you know that? That's why when they go to space, they bounce. That's how awesome your God is. That's how amazing, the Bible says he is the creator of heaven and earth. Did God make your body? Do you know how complex your body is? It's a wonderful piece of equipment. Look at your gifts, your talents, the things you can do. It's just a microcosm of God's creativity and ability. He just said, let me just give this one. Some of you, you are so proud because you can sing. You've not, you've not entered heaven. Somebody went to heaven and came back and said they heard music like they'd never heard before. That the choir in heaven, there is, a, there's, there's thousands upon thousands upon hundreds of thousands of people worshiping. But you can hear every instrument. And every voice is aligned and tuned. Wow. How marvelous is your God? How powerful is your God? A God who can raise the dead. If he can raise the dead, if, he, if he's even the one, let's not even talk about coming back from, that, from, from death. Let's talk about your body. If he created your body, can he not give you a spare part? A broken part. Can you not replace a kidney? Someone said, in heaven there is a warehouse. It's a warehouse of unclaimed kidneys, unclaimed legs, unclaimed husbands, unclaimed children, unclaimed things stored up for us. We didn't use our passport of faith. 
to access that which God has purchased for us. It's because many of you don't know you're married to Johnny. How many of you remember the Johnny story? Pastor spoke to us about a small boy called Johnny who on careers day in school, they were asking him, everybody, what they want to be. So they asked Simon. Simon wanted to be a fireman. They asked Joseph. Joseph wanted to be a milkman. You know, somebody wanted to be a doctor. Somebody wanted to be a teacher. They asked Johnny, what do you want to be? Johnny said, oh, when I grow up, I'm going to be the richest man in the world. I'm going to have chateaus in France. I'm going to have, you know, flats in Manhattan. I'm going to have lofts you know, on the Upper East Side. I'm going to have countryside estates in England. You know, all my suits are going to be bespoke. I'm going to have a garage full of every, you know, fancy car that you can imagine. I'm going to have a private jet, you know, and, and my wife is going to have a limitless credit card. Some of the ladies say amen. So, you know, the teacher got another said, Come on, Johnny, stop daydreaming. Sit down. And then he got up and asked Jenny, Jenny, when you grow up, what do you want to be? And Jenny said, I want to be Johnny's wife. <laughs> how many of you know that's a good choice? But how many of you know that you are Johnny's wife? You are the bride of Christ. Johnny has everything. Johnny has the cattle on a thousand hills. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everything that is on earth belongs to God. It's God's creation. This has to, this is the foundation, this is the bedrock of your faith. If you don't know the might and the power of the God you serve, you will not have faith for the unusual, for the extreme. Do you know that people have had children raised back to life from the dead? Okay, some of you say you believe, you, had, you extended your faith, it didn't happen. It happened for some people. Let that encourage you. I was listening to a message by, by a, a, a late Pastor Yonggi Cho. He talked about the day that his son died. He said his second son died. They were on a school trip, and they, they ate food from street vendors. There were 30 kids. They ate poisonous, they all ate poisonous food. All the 30 children started collapsing in the street. To cut a long story short, 29 children died. His son was quarter to dead. So they called him, wherever you are, come because your son, come and say your goodbyes. They gathered all the doctors in the church to come and see the boy. They told them the poison has taken hold of his body. I'm sorry. There's nothing we can do. He started praying, Lord, this boy is small. He's tiny. He hasn't seen life. Please take me. I'm a middle-aged man. Please take me. Exchange my life for his. The boy died. There's a part two. I'll tell you later on in the story. <laughs> so you cannot have faith if you haven't first apprehended who your God is. Settle it. Is your God big or small? Is he the creator of heaven and earth, or is he not? Did he rise from the grave on the third day, or is he not? Does all power on earth belong to him, or does it not? Settle it. Because that is the foundation of your faith. Number two, key, is you must seek God, not things. Seek him. He is a rewarder, the Bible says, of those who diligently seek him. Make God the desire of your heart. Make God the person you love the most. I can tell you, God is my confidant. God is my closest friend. There are things that, about my life that only God knows. I bet there are about you too. There are ways that God, some of you have testimonies you cannot share because shame is inside the testimony. But you know what God did for you. You know where God brought you from. You know the deepest desires of your heart that you could not share with anyone, that you shared with God. That's how awesome he is. The Bible says it's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. A brother, the Bible says a friend is made for adversity. 
That's who God is. A friend that their, special, their speciality is trouble. Don't you wish you had that friend? Anytime there's a problem, you say, ah, no, there's a friend designed for this. His name is Jesus. Understand the, the importance of seeking God, not things. You see, many times when we say we are extending our faith, we say, oh, I'm believing God for a husband. I'm believing God for a house. All our focus becomes on the thing we are believing God for. No, no, no. Let your faith rest in the power of God. Let God be your focus. Let Johnny be your focus. How many of you know that if, if Johnny knows that all Jenny is after is his car, all Jenny is after is his credit card, will Johnny be forthcoming? No. We give freely when love is genuine. God knows that, you know, somebody was, was saying about how, you know, they, 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 maybe the dad was a pilot and because he was away from home a lot or a minister, uh, somebody who worked who wasn't often at home. So every time he will come, he will bring presents, you know, for the kids. And he said, you know, uh, he, he one day was waiting at the airport. He had bags in his hands, everything. The kids were running to meet him. He was so happy. He thought, wow, my kids have missed me. They have, and they just came and grabbed the bag. Hey! And started saying, Daddy, what did you bring? Daddy, what did you bring? He said, Jesus. The kids are looking forward to the gift more than the giver. Is that your predicament? Could that be your job description? God wants us to seek after. He said to, to Abraham, I am your exceedingly great reward. I am your reward. God is your reward. There's nothing you want that is more precious than God. Nothing can take the place of, I'm telling you, I was watching this um, documentary some time ago about this lady who was a model in the 70s. She was like the it girl. And everybody wanted to be like her. She got married and her husband abandoned her. She had a drug problem. She ended up roaming the streets of Paris. And then one younger model was talking about how she bumped into her on the road. And the girl, and, and you know, this it mode was into, can you help me? Can you help me? I don't know the way. Can you help me? And she wasn't asking for direction. Do you understand? She was saying, uh, what's the meaning of life? And she said she was shocked because this was the it girl. This was what, this was the person everybody wanted to be. And here she was asking, what's the way? What's the way? What's the, what's the answer? I can't find it. I've tried it in LSD. It's not there. I've tried it on the wrong ways of Paris. It's not there. I've had every designer item. He's not there. The amazing thing is that when we seek him, everything that Johnny has, Johnny shares. When Johnny knows your desire is for him. So one of the things we have to learn to do is to enjoy God. Luxuriate in his presence. Go to bed with worship music, just playing. You know, let, let your heart be lively. You, do you know what it's like to be in love? How many people have been in love here? See, some of you don't want to share. I pray that you fall in love if you've never fallen in love before. You see, when you fall in love, life is different. You are excited, you know, you, are, you have joy. You are just smiling. People will be looking at you as like, have you eaten? No. <laughs> but, uh, you are just, you are okay. Yeah. Do you know, do you know that when I, when I listen to, to Dusi Oyekon songs, I fall in love with Jesus. There's one song he sings. All, uh, I'll be here. Worshiping all of the days of my life, I'll be here lifting hands all of the days of my life. Wow. 
Just tell, it's me and you, God. It's me and you. Just love on God. Journal to God. Write God love letters. To my best friend. I want to thank you for this, for that. You know, the other day, my son came out, I came back home at 2 a.m. And I just said, Lord, thank you. No, you are, some of you are saying, hey, you have, hey, you don't have young adults. <laughs> After, I, before I didn't used to sleep, now I sleep. The Bible says he gives his beloved rest. <laughs> because you make assumptions that you go out and you come back. Lord, I thank you. Developing a heart of grace, just knowing little things. Some of you, is, you know, my husband said to, on his birthday, I wrote him, I, it was actually part of my devotional, but on, my birth, on his birthday, I was just thanking God for him. And then I did a screenshot of the aspect of my thanksgiving that was about him and said to him, he said, ah, praise the Lord, though, because more, normally we hear more about the things we don't do. That's what he said. <laughs> so it's very nice to see all these things that you wrote here. And I, I realized, you know, it's so easy to take things for granted. To, for, for the people that are precious to you to not know their value because you don't tell them. So learn to just love on him. Let God know if you give me, nice. If you don't give me, I'm still following you. That's what God wants to see. Number three, understand how faith comes. We're going to talk about faith gates. I, I, you know, thankfully, faith is something you can draw to you. If you don't have faith, you don't have to stop at your level of faith. Aren't you grateful for that? That there are things that you can do to activate and build up your faith. So we're going to talk about five, five faith gates, and this is how a gate is something that gives you entrance into a place, entrance into something. So we're going to talk about five gates to greater faith. And our scripture is in Mark 8, 14 to 21. And, you know, Jesus had gathered his apostles, his disciples, and he was talking to them about bread, and then they started whispering amongst themselves, oh, is it because we didn't bring bread? We didn't? And this is what he said to them, verse 17. It says, but Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, why do you reason because you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive nor understand? Is your heart still hardened? Having eyes, do you not see? Having ears, do you not hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves or the 5,000, how many baskets full of fragments did you take up? They said to him, 12. Also, when I broke the seven for the 4,000. How many large baskets full of fragments did you take up? And they said seven. So he said to them, how is it you do not understand? So Jesus was saying, ah, have, you not, have you not seen enough for your faith to be built? And then he, he, he highlighted some key things that were instructional for building faith. So one of the things he said was, having ears do you not hear? So Jesus made it clear in that scripture that hearing is a key faith gate. Romans 10, 17, it says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, this scripture, is there a problem with this scripture? Look at the scripture properly. Do you have it up there? It says, faith comes by hearing. Media guys, can you put Romans 10, 17 up? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Do you have a problem with that scripture? She said, I don't know whether it's the lawyer in me, but I had, I had when I, I said, okay, okay. Why doesn't it just say, faith comes by hearing? Is that, it should, is that not what the scripture should say? Faith comes by hearing the word of God, right? But that's not what it says. It says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it's saying there is an ability to hear spiritually Faith comes by hearing. That only comes when you give attention to hearing the word of God. So it's saying two things. It's not saying what you think it's saying on first reading. 
So Jesus, what he's saying is that once you spend enough time in the word of God, you develop a spiritual ability to hear God. That's why you must absolutely prioritize, absolutely give attention to the word of God. Make sure you are hearing words that build your faith. And make sure there are different avenues for the word to enter your life. Scripture, gospel songs, sermons, testimonies, Christian books. They're like channels of life, rivers of life that you are giving yourself access to. You know, I was listening to a Nathaniel Bassi song the other day and he, he, he spoke a psalm that I've never heard. He said, Lord, give remembrance to your covenant for the places of the earth are full of the haunts of the wicked. Ish, it hit me like an arrow. Now, let me say to you, you are not going to hear that in a Davido song. Can we talk? It's not going to hit you in a Burner Boy song or a Beyonce song. That's why the Bible says speak to each other in psalms, in hymns, and spiritual songs. Spiritual songs. So I was saying to the first service, people, when you hear a song, and what the song makes you want to do is, once you begin to see, it's doing your body like this. <laughs> so move, eh, you say, uh-uh, no, this is not a spiritual song. They, they don't move your body like that. If it's moving your, it's not a spiritual song. But when you hear the song and it's, hey, thank you, Jesus. Uh-huh. It's a spiritual song. This is what, you see, this is the, we're talking about activating faith. You cannot sow, the Bible says, sow to the spirit. You cannot sow to the flesh and expect to reap of the spirit. It does not happen. If you do Netflix for eight hours, you will be flixed and fleeced. <laughs> Have you spent eight, I, I know some of you have watched a box set in one weekend, just say blood of Jesus. Lord have mercy. But have you watched eight hours of, of, of sermons on Saturday? Have you listened to eight hours of worship on Saturday? We are talking about growing your faith. It's not going to happen with one hour in church on Sunday. Sorry. That's not how faith comes. So you must give yourself access to the word of God because that is what helps you to hear God. And once you hear God, you are able to say, as the Roman centurion, just a word. He said, just say the word. Because you receive the word that is potent and pertinent for your situation. Number two is the gate of sight. The gate of sight. He said to them, having eyes, do you not see? So Jesus said people had little faith. When they let circumstances they saw create doubt. So in Matthew 16, 8, Peter had stepped out on the word. Peter was walking on water. Like some of you, God, you know, God gave you a business. God gave you a marriage. God gave you a ministry that you stepped out on. It didn't make sense, but you've been walking in it. Then you get to a particular juncture and then you begin to see some troubles and you take your face off what, what God told you and you begin to look at the circumstances. This is what happened to Peter and he began to drown. So you must be intentional about fixing your gaze on things that build your faith, not things that diminish your faith. Do, do, how many people would know that the rate of depression, anxiety, it soared during the lockdown? How many of us know that? I am personally convinced that it is due to Sky News, BBC News, Channel 4, 5 News, all the news outlets that were giving us hour on hour reports of how many people were dying. And there's somebody on my house, in my house every hour, he likes to watch the news, news updates. And I always say, the news has not changed. It's the same. 
It's just, they just replaying it, but no. So during COVID, I had to say, let's just be watching this once a day. Let them tell us how many people died at the end of the day, and we know it's done for the day. Not that we're hearing it at 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., 12. How many of you know that's not good news? The Bible says whatever is good, whatever is of lovely report, fix on these things. So COVID is over, lots of people died, but how many of you know that a lot more people survived than died? But if you watch the news, you would think there's nobody else on the streets. Well, in fact, when you go out and you see, say, hey, everybody has died. <laughs> if you fix your gaze on the news, that's what you believe. So if you're going to have faith, you have to be intentional about what you focus on, what you gaze on. Number three, the gate of memory and meditation. The gate of memory and med meditation. He said, do you not remember? So Jesus began to call to their memory all the things he had done for them previously. Don't you remember when I came through? In this, the time they almost kicked you out because you didn't have school fees and I came through. Uh, don't you remember the time when you were sick and I came through? Don't you remember the time you were stranded in America? You didn't know nobody and a stranger gave you money. God begins to bring. If you are intentional, your, your memory can be a faith gate and a faith booster. That's why David said in Psalm 63, when I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches. Hey, but what do we meditate on in the night watches? We meditate on Instagram in the night watches. I was telling people that I had to write, I had to journal. Instagram was eating my life. And I know some of you have been there. I had to journal about five reasons why I needed to take Instagram off my phone. Because when I should be going to bed, I'll be, I'll be watching comedy skits on Instagram, laughing. My husband would be like, are you okay? Why are you laughing? I said, no, that is for really funny. I'm going to send it to you. And I'll be watching kids in Africa. Doing... I'll be watching cats. Talk. I follow a dog that talks on Instagram. Do you guys follow a, a, a talking dog? I mean, this dog has more personality than... That's how Instagram wastes your life. So I put Instagram off my phone. Now, to visit Instagram, I have to go onto my laptop and click on. That's how I like it. Otherwise, I'm on the train. Ah, let's see what's happening on Instagram. Just some of you do your Instagram history or TikTok, or whatever it is that you are into, LinkedIn. For some of you, it's business contact, eh, mentoring, eh, check. <laughs> Have you given that much attention? So hey, let me just think on God's faithfulness. How God has been good, how God helped me. Let me remember that tonight. You, that's why you see some people you just hear tambourine shh, in the middle of the night. They are not mad. If you hear tambourine, brrr, I have a sister. In the night, you can just be hearing tambourine. Hey, shh. That means, hey, Jesus, I remember your goodness. The devil is scared of some people like that. Oh. I, I was telling uh, Tony the other day that there are some laughs that make the devil mad. You know, you listen to some... some some worship songs, you just hear, ha, ha, ha. Once I hear that, I'll say, ah, the devil is in trouble. That means some light has hit. Some revelation has hit. I say, ah, devil, you are a liar. You are not taking my marriage. Ish. This is how faith comes. No, you can't be fleshly and want spiritual results. Can we talk? We're in church. We should not be talking about uh, marketing schemes in church. That's not what church is. The Bible says the church is the pillar and the ground of truth. That's what we're here for. Oh, I think I did better than last time. Oh, we haven't talked. No, they're still sorry. No, I was getting too excited. <laughs> On point three, we still have two more points. Number four is the gate of associations. If you're going to be strong in faith, you have to be careful about people in your circle. 
The people in your circle, do they boost your faith? Do they build your faith? Or do they diminish your faith? You know, the Bible talks about a paralytic in the book of Mark who, you know, obviously he's paralyzed, he couldn't move, but his friends decided they were not happy with him in that state. So when they heard that Jesus was around, they went to try and get in the meeting. They couldn't get in the meeting. They took off the roof. Do you have vigilant, virulent friends like that who refuse to let you stay the way you are? Who are always challenging you up? You know, when my kids were, were in nursery, I had one lady like this, you know, she was a wife of my um, her husband was friends with my husband, and they were both pastors. So I thought, ah, praise the Lord, somebody who knows my story. So I thought, hey, I found somebody I can just moan to about how horrible church people are. <laughs> you know, someone that we can commiserate. So, you know, when I meet with her, I just want to moan, complain. She'll be like, oh, but God, hasn't God been good? Hasn't God been faithful? I just be eyeing her. Are you real? But I want to scratch it. Like, Come on, let me take off a mask. Is there a real human being on that day? But you know, that's, that's how she is. And her temperament, the Bible talks about the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit. I learned that from her. I thought, wow, this is who she really is. Do you have people like that in your, that challenge you up in your, in your Christian growth and maturity? You know, in one of our clusters, the lady packed up her bag. She said she was going. The marriage is over. Her cluster fasted and prayed. She didn't fast and pray. Her cluster fasted and prayed until her marriage was restored. In one of our locations, yes, it's good to clap. That's the power of a small group. In one of our locations, a lady, you know, was told that her, her baby was a stillbirth. The baby had died. And all they needed to do was vacuum the baby out so that the baby doesn't stay in there and infect her. But this was a child. For this child, we prayed. So the location pastor and some key people there said, no, ah, Oh, first of all, to conceive. Then to get to this point, this lady has been on bed rest. For, no, this baby is not dying. The baby is alive, out of the womb, doing well. Because some people decided the devil's report was not their report. That's the power of having the right people around you. When Job lost everything, do you know what his wife said to him? Curse God and die. You have some people like that. They don't know how to support faith. So you have to set boundaries. Do you know what Job said to her? He said, do not talk like the foolish women. He didn't call her a foolish woman. He said, do not talk like the foolish women. He said, because when we were living large, you didn't ask me to curse God. When we were the richest people in this, in this city, when everybody was bowing and scraping to us, you didn't say curse God and die. This situation is not the fullness of God's plan for us. This is just a passing through. Associations, critical. Number five is the gate of the mouth. The gate of the mouth. Faith is activated by what we say. Your declarations, there are different types of prayer. And when you are using faith in prayer, you are using faith in prayer. Faith, first of all, to petition God based on his word. But you also need to use faith to make declaratory statements and confessions. In Matthew 8, 8, the centurion said to Jesus, just speak a word and my servant is healed. He said, your word is a no, just speak. But remember, speak a word. In Matthew 21, 21, Jesus himself said, Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also you will say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. It will be done. 
It's very, very important if you're going to be a faith person to be a little bit peculiar and a little bit ridiculous. You have to speak to things. And you know why? Because the words that you speak are powerful. If you don't believe me, John 7, 63, what does it say? It says, these words I speak to you, Jesus, Jesus speaking, these words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So when you speak God's word, you release something into the atmosphere. You release the spirit of God. You, re you release the life of God upon your situation. That is why you must be, somebody said you must be a speaking spirit. You cannot be a faith-filled person and be a quiet person. No, 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 no. You need to speak over your, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I will live and not die to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The Bible says the path of the righteous, it shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. My life is not going down. Is going up. I'm Holy Ghost powered. I'm Holy Ghost activated. That's how you speak to yourself. You must confess the word of God. Speak the word of God over your life because the Bible says their spirit and their life. Their spirit and their life. They contain the spirit of God. They contain the power, the life, the zoe of God. I can't believe that you and I have the power to release God's spirit and God's life over our situations. Do you talk? Talk to your business. Talk to your marriage. Talk to yourself. I'm not lazy in Jesus' name. Some of you need to start saying that. I'm not lazy. I'm proactive. I'm a hard worker. I think fast. Opportunities come to me. Favor comes to me. People like me. Yeah. Begin to speak the word of God. Do you, know, do you know that there is a promise for everything you are looking for? If you want academic excellence, the Bible says that, um, is it Daniel, that they said they knew, he knew more than his teachers. If you want to be favored, it says Esther observed favor from everyone she sought. What are you looking for? It's in the word of God. But have you, have you taken the word of God to begin to release it over your life? You must speak to things. Some of you who have children, you are looking at the children, you're wondering, you don't look like you should look. Do some of you have children like that? Or your business, it doesn't look like how it should look. Speak to your business. Speak to your children. My children are blessed of the Lord. In their generation, they will serve God. God will direct their feet. They will be taught of the Lord. The grace, the spirit, the power, the wisdom of God will rest upon their life. Yeah. It may not be manifest yet. Be speaking it. God's word is powerful. Understand how faith comes. You can't say you want faith and you are just waking up. God, see me, oh. Another Valentine has come and gone. I'm still here, oh. When you, are, when you should be saying, Beulah, my land shall be married. Yes. Those who see me desire me. Like Ruth, I happen upon the right places. Speak over your life. Listen, practice it. Challenge yourself. Just say, for the next three months, I'm going to speak God's word concerning your life. If there's no change, please come and see me. If nothing shifted, nothing changed, come and see me. The Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar and every circumstance a liar. Number four, be diligent and persistent. 
Be diligent and persistent. The Bible says he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Who diligently seek him. Can I get my phone? Can you just put it here for me? I want to keep an eye on time. Jesus commended people for great faith when they were persistent. The fruit, the fruit of faith requires diligence and patience to manifest. And many times we don't receive what we have believed because we are too easily put off. Forgetting there is sometimes a delay in performance. And I'm going to give you four reasons why there's a delay in performance. I'm going to speed through them for sake of time. Number one is because sometimes there's demonic resistance to overcome. We know in the book of Daniel that the Bible says that Daniel was praying. Daniel was praying for 21 days. But he was being resisted. And it took 21 days to break through. Yeah? I had a dream uh, a, a few weeks ago. And somebody showed up in my dream and told me, God is bringing this. No, he didn't say, he said this is coming, but this is the price for it. Yeah? Like saying something good is coming, but this is the price for it. So it was like a, a witchcraft manifestation. So I got up and I began to say, the blessings of the Lord, they make it rich. He added no sorrow. I cancel, I cancel, I cancel. So sometimes, what it is that you are believing God for, it doesn't come because there is a demonic resistance to what it is that you're praying for. Some of you have family line issues, inherited things that you need to overcome. Yeah? We are taught a lot about that in church, so I won't pray, uh, uh, place a lot of emphasis on it in this message. Number two is that sometimes there's a delay because God is building character for the promised end. How many of you know that when Joseph received the dreams he received as a child, he was a very different person from the Joseph who mounted the office of prime minister? The first Joseph was very boastful. He always used to say, imagine God tells you you are going to be greater than some people who are older than you. And you go and tell them, ah, I know you people are senior to me, but I just want to announce to you, I'm going to rule over you. You are going to bow to, will you like Joseph? Because we, we are always, we are always, you know, going on about Joseph's jealous brothers. But if your junior brother came to you and started saying, you are going to serve me. Ah, ah. You say, see this little rat. That was what was going on in Joseph's household. So they said, okay, let us see what will become of this dreamer. So by the time Joseph got, when they even took, took him to Pharaoh, he said, ah, the interpretation is of the Lord. Yes. He had become very humble. So sometimes elevation is delayed because you are not ready for elevation. You don't have the wisdom for the office. Number three, reason for delay is that God is putting ancillary things in place connected to your answer. I think about Elizabeth and Zacharias, how they were praying, praying, praying for a child. God wanted to give them a special child because they were a special couple. But the set time for Jesus to come into the world had not come. And John the Baptist was to be the forerunner of Christ. So until Jesus was ready, their baby was not ready. So some of us, the things that we are waiting for, God is saying, just wait, just wait. You know, I always pray, why the Holy Ghost, why do these songs come into my heart, these secular songs? Just when I thought my, the best had passed, you went and saved the best for last. How many of you know the song? Sorry, I know. This is why I'm not in the choir. What's her name again? Vanessa. I can't remember her name. Vanessa Williams. 
You went and saved the best. God saved the best for last. God saved the best for last because he's still cooking the testimony. Some things that need to be in place are not in place yet for the testimony to be perfect. And then sometimes God delays just so that it can be clear that it is him at work. God wants to do some things that nobody can query whether it's God or not. God still wants to leave a testimony of him and what he can do in the earth. That's why he showed up. If you show up to somebody at 75 and tell them you're going to give them a baby, are you not able to do it then? How many of you first of all know that 75 is late? It's like, God, what were you waiting for since? And then when he shows up at 75, he adds another 25 years to make 100. That's when Sarah's and Abraham's baby showed up. Abraham was 100 years old. And then the other day I was reading, reading the book of, of John and it said that when Jesus heard that his friend Lazarus had died, he waited a few further days. I'm like, they said your friend Lazarus. Not one of the Pharisees that you hate. Your friend Lazarus died. And you, you waited a further day. They said by, by the time, the scripture says that by the time Jesus showed up, one of the sisters said, he's been dead four days. He stinketh. Is there anybody here with a stinking problem? So much time has elapsed on it. You don't even think God can move on that situation. So let me finish Yom Gicho's story. The boy dies. And he begins to wail and cry out to God. God, why are you doing this? I said, take my life. This boy is too young to die. He stays there weeping and weeping. After a while, everybody commiserates with him. You know. Get up, eat something. As he was getting up, Holy Spirit said, are you not the preacher who is always telling people they should persist in the place of prayer? They should not give up. Don't you believe what you preach? That's how he returned to prayer. To cut a long story short, the boy revived and is alive till today. I think it's a good place to clap. Now, remember that 30 children ate poison. 29 children died. So, is it a fluke? So, the boy, when he comes back to life, he's saying to his dad, Dad, can you see Jesus? Can you see Jesus? And the dad is like, no, no, where is Jesus? He said, Jesus is right there. And he tells him that he went to heaven and he saw people from their church who had died. But that they were looking young and they were sparkling. Everybody was radiant. And the place was beautiful. And he didn't want to come back. And that he was saying to Jesus, let me stay here with you. I love it here. Let me stay here with you. But Jesus said, no, your dad won't let you go. Your dad's prayers won't let you go. Now, I don't know if you need a testimony, but honestly, that provoked me when I heard that story. Number five and final point, be assured of your reward. Be assured of your reward. Be settled about God's plan concerning your life. If you still fret about whether or not it will be done, you don't have faith yet. Faith is rested and assured. It believes even before it receives. You know, in the world, we say seeing is believing, right? No. In God's kingdom, believing is seeing.
Believing is seeing. I think about so many key things in my life, and God gave me rest in the most ridiculous circumstances. When we were going to transition out of our last church, I always say, maybe you people have heard this testimony. Please bear with me. It's my testimony. I was 110% sure it was the will of God. So it did not matter how boisterous the winds got. There were things that should have made us anxious. We had two boys, not one, two boys in private school. It's not chicken change. But we had no salary. For the first time in the UK, I got a substantial, I'm talking about thousands of pounds of tax refund. That's how much our salary dropped. Our salary dropped to probably like 25% of what it was previously. There was nothing. No church, no church building, no congregation, no savings, no backup plan. Just the word of God. Leave your father's house to a land that I will show you. And I cried a lot. I cried a lot because I saw a lot of things. But I was crying because I was hurt, not because I didn't believe God's word. I was absolutely sure that I was in the will of God, that we were in the will of God. In fact, I would be the one, I'm the action plan lady. So I'll be the one, to so, so what's the vision? What's the plan? Because I want something to work with. And my husband is the prayer man. Yeah, please, I'm still waiting on the Lord for the next step. So this is what he was said concerning Abraham. He says, not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. This is the, that's the key. Is God able to perform what he promised? You know, I, and you know, I love scripture because scripture likes to just make people look good sometimes. This Abraham that they said didn't waver in faith. Right after God said that, he asked God, how do I know you would do it? He carried Lot around with him as his imposter child. When Lot finally misbehaved and left, he manufactured Ishmael. This is the person the Bible says did not waver in faith. You know, part of what, the reason I believe it took 25 years is because Abraham was just messing up the plan. God said, leave, don't take Lot. He carried Lot. God said, the child will come from your womb. He said, God, bless Eliezer, my servant. God said, did I tell you it's your servant? Because in those days, if you didn't have a son, your best employee, who would be like a son, would take your inheritance. He said, Lord, bless Eliezer. God said, I, I'm not blessing Eliezer. One will come from your body. Okay, so when Sarah brought Hagar, he said, ah, okay, maybe this is how God wants to do it. You know, let's connect with, with Hagar. Hagar brought Ishmael. God said, this is not the one I said. This is not my plan. He says, Sarah will carry the child. Now, they had a comedy show. First of all, Abraham laughed. Then when Abraham finished laughing, he passed the baton on to Sarah. Then she also laughed. That is how ridiculous God's story was. So perhaps there's somebody here. People have laughed at your story. Your story seems ridiculous. Your situation seems unturnaroundable. 
The Bible says concerning Abraham, he was as good as dead, i.e., their reproductive organs. I mean, Sarah had hit menopause. I don't know what men hit. Women menopause. They were both on pause. The ability to reproduce was their reproductive organs were no longer working. But is God not the maker of the womb and the maker of the sperm? If God is able to take a baby and put it in the belly of a virgin, why do we find it? The, the, the Bible says, why would we find it hard to believe that if God created the world, he could have a son? Because some people were also doubting whether or not Jesus was the son of, of God. Is there anything that's too difficult for God to do? Just look at the earth we live in. Look at how marvelous it is. That's how marvelously God wants to make your life. So I want to just give you a moment here. Perchance there's something in your life that has proved difficult, immovable. I want you to challenge God today. Tell God, this, this message has moved my heart. This message has provoked my faith. God, I know there's nothing that's too difficult for you. Today, I want to lay up this broken marriage, this broken business, this broken body, this broken leg, this cancerous body, this barren womb. I want to lay down this depression. I want to lay down sickness. I want to lay down unproductivity. I want to lay down in deadness. Father, give me faith. Speak a word that will change my situation. I want to give you a moment to just do that. And while we have heads bowed, I also want to give this moment to somebody who doesn't know Jesus. You've never made that decision for Christ. If you haven't, you don't have an entrance into his kingdom. You don't have an eternity with him. And so if you're saying today, I want to transition. I want to become part of God's body. I want to be part of God's kingdom. I want Jesus to take all my sin. Because the Bible says he is cast our trespasses far away as the east from the west. And today he's saying, my arms are outstretched to embrace you. I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to embrace you. I want to give you an eternity with me. I want you to just lift up your hands. I want to pray with you. You're saying, today is my day. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I want to give my life to Christ. If that's you, I want you to lift up your hands wherever you are. I want you to lift up your hands wherever you are. If you're lifting up your hands, can you lift it up? Don't leave it half masked. Lift it up so that we can put a card into your hands. God bless you. There's still an opportunity. There's still another opportunity for you to give your life. There's also going to be a QR code on the screen. If you would rather do it incognito, please, you can lift up your heads now. You can screenshot the QR code and you can inform us of that, your decision there, and somebody will be along to pray with you and lead you in the faith. God bless you. Wow. Somebody say, wow. Such a classic message. Um, simple, relatable, yet very powerful. Um, if you don't mind, why not just stretch your hands towards me? I think it's needful that the Lord will fill our back, that same source where she was able to um, share God's word. 
the Lord will replenish her in grace and wisdom, a ranking in the spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we, can we celebrate God again? Wow. That's a message you want to go back to um, in the course of a week. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing God's word. Um, one off is not enough. Amen. So please, let's go back to YouTube and just make a note if you didn't already do that. I think this message is a tool for success. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a game changer. Well, my assignment is simple, a couple of things to run through. Uh, but the first is um, just expressing our love to God in terms of just uh, giving him our offerings this morning. The Bible says that uh, we should not come into the house of God empty-handed, for God loves a cheerful giver. Uh, so if you don't mind, there are a number of ways you, you can give. You can scan the QR code on the screen, or if you want to do it the traditional way, we have envelopes uh, moving around. If you want to give in cash, and our prayer is that the Lord that sees our seed and our offering in secret, it will give you bountiful reward. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Um, just a few announcements. Um, our young adult ministry called Vibe will be hosting their monthly session this Friday by 6.30 p.m. Um, I believe the, yeah, that's it on the screen. So if this is something... Uh, that sounds like it's for you. Uh, if you're in that demography, I'd like to encourage you to be a part of it. Uh, it's going to bless your life. Good news, Liberty Men. We've got um, a meet and greet, connection bonding after the service. Any married men in the house, young men, that's something to be a part of. Um, I think the venue is going to be just right behind this auditorium uh, at the Liberty Tribe uh, room, there's refreshment. It's just an opportunity for us to connect with one another, make some friends in church. Uh, so don't rush out. Women, uh, mothers, kindly give us some time uh, so that we can um, connect with one another and be a part of what God is doing. And then we've got uh, Liberty Ladies also. You guys always have something going on, so... Uh, next week, Saturday, or this Saturday, I believe, um, there is um, a connect and branch. Um, so if you've not already registered, I think PB mentioned in the first service that registration closes on Wednesday. If this is something you want to be a part of, we encourage you to be a part of it. And there's a, a book launch. Pastor Bimbo launches a book at that event on Saturday. So come be a part of that. It's going to bless your life. How many of us currently serve at the Liberty Church? You volunteer. Let me see you wave at me. Thank you for serving. Majority of us in the room are not already serving. So next week Sunday we have our serve fair. It's just an opportunity for you to be a part of what God is doing in this house. This is a moving church and we're going places and you want to be able to write your name in the uh, sound on the sand of time. Um, so next week, Sunday, be on the lookout. Uh, there'll be an opportunity for you to register your interest. Well, get to know about all the teams that we have in church and then register your interest uh, in any of the teams that God may be leading you to serve. Um, this week, beginning on Tuesday, we're going to round off our uh, April cluster campaign. Anybody excited about that? Breaking the patterns or the cycles that are breaking you, it's been life-changing. Uh, if you already don't belong to a cluster, uh, please send an email to clusters at the Liberty Church, london.com, or go on Eventbrite to register if you don't attend a cluster. Or just meet with me or Pastor Duke immediately after the service. We'll be happy to connect you uh, to one of our cluster group. Um, our 90 days of... Prayer altar continues this week, I believe from tonight. Um, it's been life-changing. We just concluded the 60 days of praying and interceding, and now we've got another opportunity to press in 
um, in prayer for the next 90 days. So that's something you want to be a part of. What I've begun to do is, even when I'm not leading or joining actively, my wife and I, we just tune in and just sleep in that, you know, so there's no devil, there's no demon. And anything that God is going to do for you this year is going to do in response to prayer. So that's something you want to be a part of. Almost finally, um, our building God's house update. Um, if you don't already know about this, we're uh, raising funds, I think, three million pounds to acquire three different uh, church buildings, uh, making room for God, uh, uh, creating room for God and, you know, just getting a place of worship for each of our main locations in the city of London. So this week, I can't see what's on there. Yes, so far we've been able to raise a million, 255 million, 1.225, um, pardon me. And this week uh, we were able to raise 15,000 pounds. That's something good to celebrate. Amen. So if there's something that you have not already plugged into, uh, kindly be a part of it. Turn to your neighbor and say, money is coming your way. That was a wrong neighbor. They didn't seem happy for you. Turn to another neighbor that might be interested in here and say, money is coming your way. But when, when the money comes, when the new job comes, when the hoping just comes, just make sure um, you plug into what God is doing so that we can have more resources um, to fulfill this vision. Please fix your eyes on the screen for some announcements and Pastor B will be back here to close out. Celebrate Jesus. Your uh, patterns, we are dealing with stronghold, the stronghold of the mind. There is no strong man here. The story of what we call the newt, the an example, uh, uh, apparently an experiment was done in newt is like a, an amphibian, like a, you know, so like a frog jumping, jumping, and it was put in a jar, and it kept jumping, jumping, and it kept hitting the lid of the jar. Then after about 30 days, they removed the lid, and guess what? The newt, even though there was no limitation or barrier, it kept jumping to the level where the lid was, even though the obstacle had been removed. That's what you call mental conditioning. Even when you deal with a spiritual pattern, you have to be aware, you know, mindful. So many times we pray for people, but you say this thing is still there. Why? Because the mental barriers have not been broken or removed. I gave the example of the lady who did the PLAB exam, and I, I told her even before I prayed for her, I said, you know what, we're going to pray for you. Let's, we're going to fast and pray. We're going to break this thing. We prayed, fasted. You know, but before, I said, after you fast and pray and break this thing, before you see that exam, don't sit the last exam, which was her final. Don't sit it for some months. Just wait. What else was I trying to do? I said, spend time building yourself in the world, in your self-esteem back. Why? Because, because you failed it three times. Yeah. Even though the spirit has been broken, your mind still thinks you're a failure. Hi, TLC Global, and a special shout out to Croydon. I'm Panashi. You can call me P, and this is the Liberty News. I hope you enjoyed the second message in our series for April, our season of faith. Here is a reminder of the major events and initiatives we have lined up for you this week. You can also check out details of the events in our weekly spotlight email, which drops every Monday. Herald, TLC's evangelism team is inviting you to a seminar on evangelism and outreach, which takes place online on Thursday at 6 p.m. Please register on Eventbrite. Are you a Liberty lady? We invite you to their Connect Day and brunch. It will be a day of fun, of food, of fellowship, as well as learning how to advance in prayer. It takes place on Saturday at 11 a.m. at the Liberty Point. Please register on Eventbrite. To my fellow Vibers, the Young Adults Ministry at TLC Global, we have a session this Friday at 6.30 at St. Luke's Millwall. The theme of the session is In Awe, the Fear of God. Please follow Vibe on their social media page for more details. 
Restore. Our counselling ministry invites you to this year's Bouncing Back course, which continues online tomorrow at 7 p.m. Registration is on Eventbrite. Do you want to volunteer? We'll be holding a surf fair next Sunday after service at all of our locations. Please stop by and find out more about the many opportunities to join our amazing teams. The next Connect class, which is the first step to becoming a member of TLC, takes place online on Thursday via Zoom at 7 p.m. Please send an email to nextsteps at the libertychurchlondon.com to register. The current series of Fortify, the discipleship class at TLC Global, continues online on Wednesday at 7 p.m. If you are yet to attend or have missed any of our previous classes, please send an email to discipleship at the libertychurchlondon.com. If today is your first time at the Liberty Church, or your first time in a long time, our pastors would love to meet you. Please listen out for the announced meeting point for a brief chat if you are on site at any of our locations. Until we come your way again next week, stay liberated. Hallelujah, thank you for that. Can you hear me? Yeah, thank you for Pastor Bims for that message. You know, you said something in first service and it's such a joy to be able to listen to two services because you get double for being here. So in the first service, you said something. And you know when you said, um, you hear what you want to hear. What I heard in the first service was seek. And it reminded me of the scripture in um, Amos 5 verse 4, where it says, seek God and live. And then in the second service, you even touched it again and you were like, oh, Job's wife said, uh, Job said to curse God and die. So I'm like, ah, seek, curse, I know what I'm doing. God bless you, Pastor Bimba, for that word. Um, I'm here just to welcome our first timers, people here for the first time or the first time in a long time. Anyone here? Is anyone first time? Any first timer here? Signify, is that a little hand up? In, come on. Kindly stand up if you don't mind. And we'd like to usher you into reception. Thank you. Be brave. Be brave. Be brave. God bless you. When you go into the reception, they'll tell you all about the Liberty Church. Yeah, there's a lady over there. Anyone else? Thank you. Um, God bless you. Thank you. Oh, there are quite a few people. God bless you. Um, so you'll be told about the Liberty Church, but yes, Pastor Bimba will come and see you in a bit. The second time, any second timers? Anyone here who's been here once and has loved it so much, they've come back. Anyone today? Don't worry, we're all here again and again. Oh, we've got somebody. Would you want to go to the back? Don't be shy because second timers get a gift. So if you want to go out, and go and collect a gift, any of your, any book of Pastor Shalom, or Pastor Bimbo's, any of Pastor Shalom and Bimbo, or Pastor Bimbo's books of your choice out there, you may have. Um, can I ask anyone who was in the first service to kindly raise your hand, because we do a, a, a account, and can you let me know when it's been done? Mr. Thank you. Anyone who was in the first service, my hand is up to, yep. Are we done? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. God bless you. You may put your hand down now. Um, we'd also like you to now be very, very careful as you go outside and not to make so much noise because we have lovely neighbors and they've been good to us. We've been good to them and we want to keep them lovely. We want to keep them on our side. So any um, socializing, can we do it in the foyer so that we don't make too much noise on our way out? Um, also, we've got an information desk and a suggestion box out in the foyer, and it is, it is looked into every week. So please, please, please take time. If you have anything you need to comment on, what we could do better, what we could, you know, anything you think that will be useful for us to know, do let us know. And finally, or pre-finally, we have, can you kindly follow Pastor Shola, Pastor Bimba, and also the Liberty Church on Instagram any social media, please. That would be great. So finally, finally, before my finally, we have a prayer line at the end of service. So anyone who needs prayer for the week, please kindly come and line up here after Pastor Bimba has closed us out. So finally, Pastor Bimba will close us out. God bless you, PB. I like that, pre-finally. Please can we rise up as we close service. I just want you to find somebody you are going to encourage, find somebody you are going to speak to, and just say to them, in the coming weeks, be sure to keep 
your faith gate of hearing, your faith gate of what you see, your faith gate of memory and meditation, your faith gate of associations, and your faith gate of speaking, open and active. Tell them, I'm looking forward as you do so to you sharing your testimony with me not too long from now. I give them a high five and tell them to have a blessed week. God bless you. See you next week. Please don't forget to come to the front if you would like somebody to pray with you concerning any issue. God bless you.